Dungok, welcome. Welcome to the Bestamukad Museum, the Passamaquoddy Museum. We're located along the Skudik or the St. Croix River. And enjoy your visit here. And we're going to look at some baskets. Um, the first one on the right with the yellow strands, it's not very old, but it comes from a tradition of old basket makers that the skills been passed on from generation to generation. The wood comes from the black ash tree. It's also called the brown ash tree or basket ash. And um, it's the strands, each wooden strand, uh, it, it's quite a process to get it at that um, size. And also included on the basket is sweetgrass. Sweetgrass is found along the coast in estuary areas and it's picked around in July of the year for about a month it's picked and as the ocean's rising we're losing more of these special sites where the sweetgrass grows. Each basket maker leaves a special mark the way they finish their basket so the generations that follow know that that's their grandmother's final touch and that that final touch stays in the next generation so it continues on and on. The third basket has a almost a, a, a wave pattern on the top. It's almost you can visualize the double curve uh, symbol of the Passamaquoddy on the top and it's also symbolic of the wave. Some of the curls, they call them curls along the bottom, um, give it a special touch. And this one is really unique. It's got a hinge where you can flip the top and the top stays open but it, it's locked with that ring. And it's also got a, um, a long tassel of sweet grass that's used as a handle on the sides. A basket like these three would take a professional basket maker maybe um, anywhere from three to five days to make. But that doesn't tell the whole process of basket making because you have to go out in the woods, locate the, the right tree. Um, and usually brown ash grows in a swamp. So you have to cut the tree down. Well, before you cut the tree down, you want to make sure that the, the wood is good. So you, you cut a little notch in it and you look at the wood and you take a little sample of the wood to make sure the grain is good. And if it's good, you cut the tree down, you cut it in anywhere from six to eight foot lengths, and you carry it out by pretty much by hand. And if you, sometimes you can get two or three lengths out of a, one tree. The tree is brought out of the woods, brought to the processing center where the bark is peeled and then the log is laid down and next comes the pounder. The pounder will take the blunt end of a heavy axe and start pounding across lengthwise on the, the log. And he'll go over it two or three times and the growth rings start to separate. So as they separate, he's able to grab one end of the separated growth rings and lift up to separate it from the log. And he continues that process. One log, one six foot log going through the pounding process would pr take about four hours. Um, if they do it steady, it would take about two hours on a 12 inch diameter log. So from, from that process, it goes to the basket maker and the basket maker will shave 
the rough ends of the strands that were peeled and then they'll take the gauges. Each one of these strands of brown ash are different widths. So you have to use a gauge with a certain type of width, whatever you want to make. So you run it through that process. And then sometimes the, the basket strands are dyed to make the different types of designs. So the strands would be cut and then go through the drying process. In the olden days, people would use berries, roots, um, and the bark of a tree, and sometimes nuts to um, give the strands different colors. Toma Joseph was the chief of the Passamaquoddy, and he was, his home was pretty much up and down the St. Croix. In the winter time, he'd be in the upper reaches of the St. Croix, the Scudic River. And in the summertime, he'd be on Campobello along the ocean. So this basket is one of the old traditional types. It comes from the white birch tree, and you have to peel the tree at a certain time of year. It's usually in the springtime. You peel the white bark, that's the outside of the tree, and then you peel it off of the tree, and you, you don't go, there's another layer of bark, it's a, a brown layer of inner bark, and you separate the white bark from the brown bark and what leaves behind because it's springtime is a brown tarnish on the inside of the bark and with that tarnish you can scrape designs and what Toma Joseph liked to do he always said I make baskets about the old time and he always said Mikwi de Hudman Mikwi de Hudman means always remember me always remember our ways and he put the the old ways he etched the designs of the old ways on the birch bark canoe. And he loved to do hunting scenes because hunting was everything. Hunting was survival. Hunting was living off the land. This scene here, Tom is coming from a canoe trip. He's got a paddle on the back. He's got his tomahawk to show he's been busy. And his wife is got the um, pot over the fire and she's preparing the meal. Um, the crosshatch designs right above it are really symbolic of the inner world and the outer world. The waves really form designs of the ocean, of the clouds. Uh, Any time it's above the scene, it's clouds. Below the scene represents the water. So the symbols here in the middle represent some of the medicinal plants that Toma Joseph was an expert on medicinal plants, and it always brings good luck, good life, long life. What's on the other side? On the other side are different scenes. The wigwam, which is also made out of birch bark. Um, Toma Joseph, uh, he's got a nice story about hunting a bear and um, killing it with his tomahawk. And his signature is his um, owl. All his artwork has the owl um, etched onto it. That would have been his family clan. And here Toma Joseph, he's telling the story. Him and his friend were portaging from, from one river to another. Here they're probably portaging across the Copscook and to the Machias, or from the Scudic and to the St. John through the Eel River portage up by, um, well, up e on the east side of the Scudic. And here they had a successful hunt and they're bringing back the game. You can see a moose right here. And they got a little smile on, bring, bringing home good news, good food. 
and a full belly for the people.